Our final variable cost variance is our variable overheads variance. Now we're going to see the approach here will be very similar to the last variances we've looked at. In particular, it will be very similar to our labour cost variances. Now when we're considering our variable overhead va variances, there are two things we need to look at. The first is our variable overhead expenditure variance. So, based on our hours worked, we would expect to have incurred a certain amount of variable overhead. At the end of the year, we want to look at was our actual variable overhead expenditure more or less than we planned. And our second variance will be our variable overhead efficiency variance. And this is going to be very similar to our labour efficiency variance. In fact, the only difference here is going to be the standard rate we apply. In this section, our standard rate will be our variable overhead rate per labour hour. Remember, we will usually absorb or charge our overheads based on labour hours. So, let's have a look then at our pro forma for our variable overhead variances. Again, we will begin by looking at our standard hours at the standard rate. But this time, our standard rate will be our standard variable overhead rate. And we will compare that to our actual hours at the standard rate. When we compare these two things, we will get our efficiency variance. So as you see, a very similar approach then to calculating our labour efficiency variance. Our second variance then is our variable overhead expenditure variance. So we will calculate that by comparing our actual hours at the standard rate to our actual hours at the actual rate. And again, our actual rate here will be our actual variable overhead rate. Comparing these two things will give us our expenditure variance. So again, what we'll do next then is have a look at an example to see how we actually calculate our variable overhead variances. So we have similar information then to what we've seen in previous exercises. We have our standard cost per unit set at the start of the year. We expect to spend two hours working on each unit. For each labour hour we work, we charge £3.50 in relation to variable overheads. So this is our overhead absorption rate for our variable overheads. And then we have our actual information, so the units we have actually produced, the actual labour hours worked, and what was our actual total variable overhead cost for the year. So we'll just put this information into our pro forma then to calculate our variances. So our standard hours at the standard rate, we should be used to this now. We take our actual production of 1,300 units. How long do we expect it to take to produce each unit? Standard hours per unit are two hours. 
Now we value this at our standard rate, but it's our standard variable overhead rate per hour, which is £3.50. When you calculate that through, you should get £9,100. Then looking at our actual hours valued at the standard rate, 2,850 hours multiplied by 350 gives us 9,975. So to calculate our efficiency variance then, it's just top figure minus the bottom figure. So our efficiency variance is 9,100 minus 9,975, which gives us then a negative figure of 875. So our efficiency variance is minus 875 adverse. So that's our first variance calculated. Moving on to our second variance then, our variable overhead expenditure variance. So we've calculated our actual hours at the standard rate. All we need to do is compare this to our actual variable overhead incurred, which we were given in the question. We were told that in total we have spent 7,800 on our variable overheads. So top figure minus bottom figure to calculate our variance, we get 9,975 minus 7,800 giving us a positive figure of 2,175. It is a positive figure, so we have had a favourable variance. Our variable overheads have cost us less than expected. Final step then, as always, we need to calculate our total variance in relation to our variable overheads. So we just need to sum our efficiency variance and our expenditure variance. So our total variable overhead variance will just be minus our efficiency variance of 875 because it was adverse. And then we add on our expenditure variance, which was favourable, giving us a total then, a positive figure of 1,300. So our overall variance was 1,300 favourable. And that's our calculations complete. Our final step again is to briefly consider what might cause these variable overhead variances for the company. Well, let's think about our efficiency variance first. In our efficiency variance, we looked at our standard hours at the standard rate. So based on the number of units we have produced and our standard hours per unit, this is the amount of variable overhead we would expect to have charged throughout the course of the year. And we compare that to the actual hours worked valued at the standard variable overhead rate. So this is the actual amount of variable overhead we have charged to our production account. Now, if you think about it, what we are really comparing here is has it taken us more or less labour hours to produce our units than expected? Which is the very same as our labour efficiency variances. So our variable overhead efficiency variance is going to be caused by the same things as our labour efficiency variance. So perhaps this has been affected by the skill of our employees or the quality of the material they have been using. Finally then, reasons for our expenditure variance. Well, it's very difficult for us to say. 
Why has our actual variable overhead cost been higher or lower than expected? Our variable overhead cost is going to be made up of a number of different components. So it is the sum of each of our individual variable overheads. So to understand what has caused the expenditure variance, we would need to look at the underlying detail. So which variable overhead has been more or less than planned? We can't do that with just the information we would have in these questions. So for our expenditure variance, further analysis of the different components would be required. Without that, it's impossible for us to say why our total variable overhead expenditure was more or less than planned.